Hi Scorpios, welcome to my channel. We're doing your, excuse me, Tire After Dark. Um, I decided to get more um, casual. I mean, I want to take time, okay? So, uh, it might be a little longer than usual. Well, it might be. Who knows? Okay, I just want to take time. Okay, anyhow, this is your um, Tire After Dark, um, which is going to be we're focusing on love alone okay. hopefully you're not lonely but alone <laughs> so let's see what's going on okay. when i mean uh longer probably it's gonna be the same time but i just want to see more cards you know i don't know you know, i'm just in a chill vibe and i want to do the reading oh okay i said i was in a chill vibe mm. Guess we're starting. You have here the Ten of Swords. Okay. The thing with the Ten of Swords is you have had enough. Okay. There's just so much things that either this person or, or just the, the situation is just too complicated. Okay. You see that? It's just too complicated. And I believe I did a reading for you where I did mention it's like, well, you know, if things are not well, you'd rather just destroy everything and rebuild. You know, it's like a totally Phoenix uh, kind of way um, to do things. So you're telling yourself here, I am so done with this. I, I can't even, I can't even see you know, anything after what has happened. Anger, frustration, name it. Because this is, you know, normally this is feeling betrayed because it's the Ten of Swords in traditional tarot. So it means that how can this person do this to you? You have this emotion, you have this feeling that because the Ace of Swords was the first and then the Ten uh, is the Ten of Swords, right? How can this be possible? Like, you know, we were talking, we were, everything was good. Everything was showing victory. Because Ace of Swords is very victorious. We got to know each other. Conversations was there. There were crossroads, Two of Swords. Decisions has to be made. We've had some breakups out, Three of Swords. There was time that I don't talk to them, Four of Swords. Big fights, Five of Swords. Six of Swords, ignoring each other. Seven of Swords, betrayal again. Eight of Swords, I got scared. Nine of Swords, I'm so paranoid. Ten of Swords, I am done. Now you know how to read a Ten of Swords. That's how. Mm hmm. Because the Aces are beginning or the start. The Aces are the start, so it only means ten is the result. Nine is the finishing part of this. And then 10 is the result of everything. So how would change uh, your life? Um, tremendously. Your life was uh, ruined at some point. But, you know, in, any, in anything that is Martian, like you as a Scorpio, um, Mars is the engineer and at the same time will destroy. So you have the ability, Scorpio, to... Oh, yeah, I like this now. Okay. No meaning like when I spend time, I can discuss your zodiac too. Okay, but don't expect, don't, you know, let's not have this too much of a hopeful. I just, more chill today. So meaning, um, you're showing your side of your life where you are, which is your strength, and at the same time, your weakness. So, you know, I was talking to the Pisces before, also, like, their strength is their too kind, and that's their weakness. For you, your strength is you're so strong that you can handle anything, any kind of betrayal from the Tree of Swords, any kind of flies with the seven of swords, that's your strength. And then your weakness is when you're done, you're done. Okay. Maybe we'll just explore the cards. You like that? I don't know. I'm just being uh, directed to do whatever I want today. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Oh, why did I shuffle? Okay. The hangman. Okay. 
Now, this card is about, well, one for sure is trying to understand them as much as possible and hanging around them. So you didn't quit. When SHIT was hitting the fan, you didn't quit. You hang around there like, you know, this is betraying yourself, by the way. Hangman is a traitor in traditional tarot. So you betrayed yourself by sticking up with them, by staying. But it was a lot of problem there. There was a lot of, a lot of things going on. It ain't easy hanging around because here you betrayed yourself by compromising you. You wanting a relationship with them, you compromise yourself. Now, the hangman is number 12, Pisces. So there could be a person who has addiction. As a 12th house, then the person could have probably had some affairs, some secrets. 12th house is, um, you know, the part where we, uh, you know, hidden secrets, even like we take it to the grave. That's a 12th that's a, that's a house energy here. So this is what ruined it. Secrets. And this is why you also hang around. You wanted to know what were they hiding. Now, here also it's showing that, you know, they become your enemy at some point. Bed pleasures was there, meaning intimacy was, was amazing. Travel and vacation was there also. You guys had amazing trips. It shows here that the two of you have amazing communication at some point. At some point, everything was being fluid. Can even, um, you know, this person has brought you to your spiritual awakening because this is Pisces, 12th house. Now, if you look at it also, um, this can be a person who, how to say this, who loves to travel like short distance or they travel for work. Okay. I'm seeing here that this person also, um, in a way, uh, loves material gains, so can be a workaholic. Loves to show themselves to work, very, very like work oriented. Okay. We're getting intuitive. We're just getting everything tonight, huh? Okay. Mm. Here, you know the card. You've seen my face thousands of times, Scorpio. Two of Cups. Okay. So let's explain this whole soulmate that everybody... Okay, let's go for the soulmate first before the love. Now, having a soulmate like this, it only means that you guys had unresolved karma in the past. You're trying to burn it this lifetime, okay? So... People would judge themselves, uh, meaning, when I say judge themselves about this, it's like, so what do I do? Should I continue to be with them and help them out because of healing? Bullcrap. Because they need me? Bullcrap. No, 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 no. Okay? It takes two to tango. You've done something in the past life. They've done something in the past life to you. Right, right now, it's just like paying it. So whatever is the outcome, meaning if it was betrayal, it doesn't mean that you have to be there and be a slave to them. Then it only means possible that you have you have hurt them in the past. You have betrayed them in the past life. So now it's just for you to be enlightened and understand. I'm not justifying what they did. Remember that. Because who knows what happened in the past life. I'm giving you a scenario. With uh, Pisces over here because I don't want you to, to fall as the victim mentality. Okay. That you're going to cater to them because of like, ooh, you have to. Nah. Okay. That ain't happening. So now this is all done. Okay, meaning you found out that this is your soulmate. You found out that this has a strong connection to you because it brought out anger. It brought, it brought uh, anger towards you. And these are unresolved issues. Can be, um, how to say this, uh, you know, from your past life also. It's all coming to surface. And that's how strong a Two of Cups is. It ain't a walk in the park. It looks like, yes, the two of you love each other, but the connection is too much. It is too much. You guys have, have shared too much karma here. Well, it's not much. I mean, I say too much karma. It's like there's just so many healing that needs to be ha that need that needs to happen. It's bringing in that uh, things are bringing out things are coming out 
this lifetime between the two of you, okay? And I told you about the Nine of Swords. Would I lie, Scorpio? Would I lie? So this is them, and you're the Ten of Swords. Now, let me explain this whole, they're the masculine, you're the masculine, and they're the feminine. So there are different ways of looking at it. This is just, I just found out this, I just found, I just learned about this recently, that, um, according to Mr. Visti, um, Lars, yes, Mr. Visti, um, that, uh, so Vedic astrology, wonderful, amazing. That your Rashi chart, which shows the physical form. So if you're a man, you're a man. You're a woman, you're a woman. You know, whatever. The Rashi chart is the physical form, and then the D9 is the Vamsha, which is it shows the inner person. So the inner person um, can be feminine. The inner person can be masculine. Those are uh, those can be seen in the D9. Now the way it works is the even numbers of the ascendant sign. So if your ascendant is in the even, uh, how to say this, um, you're gonna be uh, feminine. And if it's in the odd, your ascendant in Navamsha, you're gonna be masculine in the inside. And those are the, the, the dynamics of feminine and masculine, okay? Now, of course, people are just gonna, you know, if you're just gonna get upset because I'm teaching here, at the same time, I'm reading the cards. So now you understand why you can be a feminine person has a masculine. Um, the masculine energy though, is the more that is pushy and assertive. The feminine is the receiver. So there are guys there, okay, who are the receiver, who loves to cook, who loves to nurture. So you have here a person, if I were to go to the genitalia, even though you're the girl, let me just address the girls first, okay? For the guys. If you're the girl, you have you have the masculine inside you. And if they're the guy, they have the feminine, okay? So that's what I'm seeing. Now, if you're the masculine, then you have the feminine energy. It can, you can also have both, masculine and masculine, okay? But what, I, what I'm seeing here right now, this Ten of Swords is the masculine energy from within. This Nine of Swords is the feminine energy. Don't get confused. Yeah, so easier for the picture. They feel like you need to take action. You who's watching, you need to action. You need to make it work with them. Mm, catch my drift. You need to show love. You need to show care. You need to show that they matter, meaning they want to be babied. Mm. Okay. Babied. <laughs> this card is magical. <laughs> I said they want to be babied. And look at that in this deck. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now this deck speaks for itself. They want to be babied. They want you to be the watcher. They want you to be the protector, the provider. They want you to come to them, okay? Make it work with them. I'm telling you, the cards are very accurate. The cards are, speaks for itself. Now, again, this is uh, this can be a Taurus. This can be Pisces. You have a Leo now. So the dynamics of the relationship here is so complicated because they're not mature in the inside, okay? They're not mature. They're very emotionally... Um, unavailable, emotionally sensitive, but they don't talk. Mm -hmm. They don't talk. They even ignore you. Mm. That's the Nine of Swords. Okay. I guess it's longer because I was um, sh uh, I'm going to spend more time in each card. That's what they want tonight. Okay. Love it though. Refreshing. Eight of Wands. They want you to come towards them, travel to see them, make the move, make the effort, okay? What's interesting though, also I know Scorpio, I know you're a Mars, but I know Scorpio is a feminine uh, zodiac. Mm -hmm. So they want you to come towards them underneath the Ten of Swords, they want you now, like right now. If there's anything in their life right now that they're thinking while you're watching me is for you to message them. They want the Scorpio to message them. Hmm. 
But you have here, you're going to take, take your time here, Prince of Pentacles. I don't think you will. You're going to reassess this first. Nine of Pentacles. You're too busy. You're too busy to be bothered. You have your career. You have your health. You have a lot of things that, you know, because you're manifesting your Ten of Pentacles here. It shows here. You're single right now. Well, of course, you're single because you guys broke apart. Mm. You're all about right now, of course, your health, your finances. That's where your focus is. You want your fame. You want your success. Now, this is also partly about Venus in retrograde and Taurus. So that's why they want you to come back, but they're, they're so near and yet so far. And you can feel it with the Two of Cups also, whether you guys are talking or not. Leo, of course, right? They're going to allow their ego. They're going to allow their pride to ruin all these things. Like, I'm not going to message. And two fixed signs, oh boy. If you're dealing with Aquarius, Taurus, Leo, mm -hmm. or another Scorpio, oh boy. That's what I can tell you. Who makes the move and who cracks? Leo's having that reading also. No cross-watching, folks. I'm just giving you guys an idea what's going on there. Justice card. They want you to make it right. Who made it wrong? Them. Is there karma between the two of you? Justice card, yes. Were you guys married? Possible. Was there divorce? Justice. So karmically, you guys are still connected. When I say karmically, you guys have unfinished business still in this lifetime. Huh. That needs to be resolved. Libra. So they want you now. Leo and Libra. Do you care? No. What are you busy of? Nine of Pentacles. Being independent from them. Are you bothered? No, because you got a lot of cleaning up that they have, you know, that they have done the mess. Mm. Emperor. Okay, let's take this as the last card for you guys. Emperor is all about action. This is Mars card for me. This is the red right here, is Aries or Scorpio. Would you make a move? This is what you're thinking now. Should you make a move? Because you know it's up to you. You know that if you are pushed, you go retaliate. But if they don't, you chase. So where do you where are you now? Mm-hmm. Let's see in the extended Scorpios if you make a move and what will happen with them. They're not going anywhere. Not going anywhere. They're just there. Waiting for you. Now. Let's see what's going to happen. All right, Scorpios. So thank you very much, guys, for watching. Have a wonderful, um, wonderful night. This is your tarot after dark. And I will see you on the other side.